And welcome back to another CBB Talk with your boy, Bill Dickinson. We are Penn State. I just let off with that because the Penn State Nittany Lions knocked off Wisconsin last night and a bunch of other interesting results we got to talk about in this episode, man. And I'm pretty sure the title of this episode is going to be Can You Win on the Road in College Basketball? Winning on the Road is impossible in College Basketball. Something like that. And yeah, it's true. Uh, Not many teams can do it. And especially in the SEC and the Big 12, um, it's impossible. In the Mountain West, it's damn near impossible. And another bunch of victims got dropped off on the road yesterday, including TCU, Baylor, Wisconsin, and Utah State, all lost on the road yesterday, including and Iowa State, all were ranked and lost on the road on Tuesday night. So let's talk about some interesting results on Tuesday um, again, I always go in chronological order because I will forget if I don't. Uh, I know this is a great game to start with, and it's not the game wasn't great. It was Tennessee eighty five, Florida sixty six. You know, Florida since that Kentucky game, I'm pretty sure they're one and two since that game. But the real story is Dalton Connect. Uh, Dalton Connect. I can't I think it's Connect. Dalton Connect. 39 in this one. He's averaging over 30 points in his last three games. This dude is on a absolute tear. He's one of the best players in the country, and that's a fact. Um, what he's done is carrying this Tennessee team, and he's made them more than just a really gritty defensive team, which Tennessee's been in the past, or at least in the last couple years. Good win for Tennessee. I have him fifth in the, in the nation, and this Dalton Connect He's going to be a he right now. I think he's a first team All American. Look, it was going to be probably Terrence Shannon. I think Kanet's a Kanet's a guard. He might be a forward. I don't know how he'll be classified. I don't know if it actually matters. Um, but obviously Zach Eady, uh, Dalton Connect. I do think will be a first team All American. Hunter Dickinson will probably be a first team All American. Uh, I, but Dalton Connect right now is playing himself into that thirty nine. This one, he's one of the best scorers in the country there. Dominant win for the Vols, and he has cemented himself as a household name in the sport. A transfer from Northern Colorado in his fifth year, played Juco ball. A great story. He's he's building himself into an NBA draft pick, that's for sure. Um, can score the ball from anywhere on the court. Um, good shooter. Can play a two through three, maybe even four if he puts some more muscle. Good win for the Vols. I got him fifth. Um, right now, my favorite in the SEC. Uh, I'll just give a quick shout out. You know, this isn't a big game, but Sanford's as the longest win streak in the country officially now by itself. It was tied with Utah State after Utah State lost last night. Sanford won. Uh, they have the lead in the SoCon right now. They're the favorite. They beat Western Carolina on the road, who was also in the feed in SoCon play. Shout out to Sanford there. They're almost ahead of Stanford in the net for the first time ever. So shout out there to, I believe, the Bulldogs. I believe they're the Bulldogs. We had Alabama Bailey hold on against Missouri. Or I, it was a closer first half. Alabama blows them out in the second half against Missouri. Alabama's red hot in the S- in SEC play there. They're finally getting back to what they were supposed to be at the beginning of this year. Purdue wipes Indiana. Zach Eady with another 30-point game back-to-back for him. Purdue proves Illinois' ass is what I'm – oh, Indiana's ass. Sorry, Illinois. Purdue proved that Indiana's ass uh, – Purdue's good. I got them two in the country. Some people say they're one. I don't hate it, but I got to say, Purdue's two, but Indiana, you're bad. You're a bad team. Uh, It sucks. Mike Woodson, I think he's on the hot seat. TCU in Cincinnati played a great overtime game. A lot of missed free throws in this one. And some could say TCU got screwed by the refs. It didn't matter. Cincinnati storm courts, storms the court there, which... Interesting decision there. You beat the 19th ranked team in the country. You guys now have the exact same record in conference play and overall. You storm the court. Okay, you are favorites in that game. You can't storm a court that you're a game that you're a favorite in. That should be a rule. They did it. Shout out to the Bearcats. They're a good win there. Tennyson 17. Thomas had 21. Cincinnati missed free throws at the end of the win. Then TCU does the exact same thing after Cincinnati misses his, their both of their... I believe, I believe Skilling missed their free throws for Cincinnati there. So it wasn't a pretty game, but the Bearcats win. I still got TCU. Actually, I had TCU 16th. I have them now at 19th. Uh, not It's not a 
bad loss. Cincinnati's actually, I think, an underrated team. They could easily be 3-1, and 4-0 in, in the Big 12. But they're 2-2. Two and two. They've played tough games. This is a tournament-level team. So is TCU. And what I'm talking about is it's impossible to win road games. It's pretty much impossible to win road games in the Big 12 uh, unless it's Oklahoma State or West Virginia. If it's not one of those two teams you're losing on the road, it's almost, that's almost what the guarantee is. If you can steal one, congrats. Both these teams, let's go 500 in league play, you will be in the tournament. I think TCU is the better team. They ba- almost won this game on the road against Cincinnati. So if you win a road game in the Big 12, you got my eye. Shout out to Cincinnati, though. Big win. I just got them out. I still have TCU in the rankings there, but a very good win for the Bearcats. They're 2-2 two and two in Big 12 play. Good start of their Big 12. Of their Big Twelve run as a program, um, yeah, I think Cincinnati's trending in the right direction. There, a team that was expected to be ass, they're not. They're thirteen and four. TCU, I like TCU's roster. I think they're going to be good. A very interesting game in my neck of the woods was Wake Forest for uh, NC State. NC State holds on big ten point comeback, multiple ejections, a lot of technical fouls, and the most iconic moment of the season potentially happened from DJ Horn. At the end of the game, gave him one of these. Kids, close your eyes. He gave him one of these. That was awesome. The ref turns his back at the free throw line. He gives him the double birds. It goes viral. ACC wants to reprimand him. He apologizes. Don't apologize. That was hilarious. One of the funniest moments. That's gonna be a great meme. Uh, NC State good comeback from, come from behind when without Kevin Keats they score they outscored by 17 in the second half there Carr was amazing also, I think Austin Carr was amazing in that first half of Wake Forest nothing in the second half but NC State might be the worst shooting team I've ever seen they are they were over they only shot 10 threes and they were 0 for 10 from three they do, don't shoot well from the line I mean, they were actually decent, 25 for 33, so that's pretty good from the line there. But 0 for 8, oh, sorry, 0 for 8 from 3. They shoot 8 3, so they don't really, they are downhill reliant defensive team. But they're 5 1 in ACC play, which is their second, they're t- I think they're third in the, or tied for second in the ACC. They're playing well. I think the best four teams in the ACC are the North Carolina teams UNC, Duke, NC State, Wake, Clemson. Woo! Clemson's falling off the charts. Miami, I'm not sure. So shout out to Wake and NC State. NC State could get back in the tournament for the first time in a while, but that was a great game in my neck of the woods uh, and a great moment from DJ Horn, one of the funniest I've seen. Jerome Tang in Kansas State wins a home game in the Big 12. Not really surprised, but Jerome Tang's now moved to 3-0 against Baylor. Kansas State gets their first quad one win. Um, I think Providence probably was a quad one win, but now... Without um D Hop or B Hop um Bryce Hopkins, they they're just not a good team. Kansas State went sixty eight sixty four in overtime. Jerome Tang ten and zero in overtime in his career. Five and zero this season. Kansas State just turns into a great team in overtime. A uh, big shot there by Arthur Kalumu down the stretch. Cam Carter had eighteen. Kansas State's building a tournament resume here. They have an easy Big Twelve schedule now. That it's not round robin. Baylor, not worried. You lost a close game on the road in the Big 12 there against probably a tournament team. I can't knock you too much for that. I think I moved down like 14th in the nation there from nine. Kansas State, you're not really being considered ranked just because your your resume is not amazing. I don't know how great talented this team is, but look, if you go 500 to Big 12, you're probably going to make the tournament here. They're on pace to do that. I think they're three and one. They're playing well. Jerome Tang's changed the culture over there in Kansas. Um, and Kansas State's building a tournament resume. Really good for Kansas State. Baylor, not too concerned. But win your home games in the Big 12. They did that. Baylor, was that their first conference loss? I think that was their first conference loss this year. Not too shocking, though. Can't, winning road games is very, very tough. Uh, Deron Holmes might be one of the most underrated players in the nation. Twenty nine and fourteen in this one, he's gonna be an arguably all. He's gonna be an All American this year. Dayton's legit. I think I moved Dayton what up. Dayton's third, twelfth in my in the nation right now. Best Dayton team since Obi Toppin. They run the A ten. The A ten's pretty bad this year. It's gonna be a one bid league. Seton Hall man moved them into my top twenty five. Whoop St. John's without. Rick Patino because of COVID. They went on a 28 to nothing run or something around that. I moved Seton Hall to 25. They're 5-1 in Big East play. They're a shocking team. 
Uh, the shock team of the year, Shaheen Holloway, has done an amazing job in his in his second year over there in New Jersey. Uh, Dawes twenty one. This one, this is a really just. Un- I think their preseason projected ninth the Big East, a team that was on my radar had an average non con. They've came on strong. They've won three road games of the Big East, which is just winning three road games of the Big East is huge. They beat St. John's. They beat UConn. They have beat Marquette. And I believe they beat they beat Providence. Those are all quad one wins, I believe, and three of those are on the road. Look, Seton Hall's really, really good. I want okay. I take it back. Seton Hall's good. They're trending towards tournament. I would say yes. Then no, if I had to put money on it. But it's still a long Big East round. But they but they're thirteen five. They don't have a great non con, but they're they're six and one in the Big East right now, and they've set themselves up nicely for the future. Colorado State held, holds on against Air Force in overtime. Thank God Colorado State lost this, didn't lose this game because I would look stupid. Colorado, you got I got Colorado State twenty third in the nation right now. The Mount West is just a tricky, tricky conference, man. I can't tell if the Mount West is super good or all these teams are mid. I can't tell if all these teams are mid or all of them are good and they just beat each other. Um, we can get to that later. Clemson lost a home game to Georgia Tech. You're, the ACC is not helping themselves. Miami losing a home game to Louisville. Clemson losing a home game to Georgia Tech. What is going on? What is going on? Clemson's now lost four of their last five. A team I was super high on. They're falling off. This is what happens to Clemson these last couple of years. Good game for P.J. Hall. He had 31 there. It was enough. They lost by three in overtime. Uh, double OT there in Clemson. BYU. Wins a home game in the Big 12 against Iowa State there by 15. Shout out to BYU there. I can't. I just can't find a room in my rankings for BYU. Moved Iowa State out. Uh, and Seton Hall was the team that replaced them. I do think the Big 12 is insanely deep. I think this could be an 8-bid eight eight league this year. Uh, Johnson, 28 in this one. Spencer Johnson at 28. And nine in this one, four for nine and three. BYU shot the cover off the ball. They were, what were they? Oh, they were 13 for 30. So they actually, they really did. Their starter shot really well from three. They hit 13 threes to Iowa State's four. BYU is going to take, takes a lot of threes. And that's what they're prone to be upset, but they can beat anyone in the country. They got great computer numbers. BYU. Another surprise team in the Big 12. But again, win your home games in the Big 12 because it's really hard to win road games there. Iowa State was a victim of that. The Big 12 is just a gauntlet. Uh, that's a conference I know it's good, uh, and they just beat up each other. It happens every year. Kansas, destroy Oklahoma State on the road. Not too surprised there. Hunter Dickinson, 21. Nick Timberlake had a nasty poster in that one. Uh, Texas a and <laughs> loses to Arkansas at home. <coughs> I don't know. I really don't know. Texas A&M is a bipolar team. Georgia good win over South Carolina. South Carolina, I think they're a little they're fraudulent. Georgia wins. Georgia, I do think can be a tournament team this year. I think they're if they can finish top five in the SEC, I believe they can get there. No doubt about it. Wisconsin loses to Penn State. I was a huge Penn State fan last year with Jalen Pickett. This year, they're not that good in the first year. Coach Mike Rhodes. But they get a big win here against an undefeated Big Ten team in Wisconsin. We're undefeated in conference play. They were, what, 4-0 going into this game. They drop one on the road there. It's tough to win on the road, but you would like to beat a team that was under 500 going in. They don't. AJ scored 23. It wasn't enough. The Badgers drop one, and now they only have a one-game lead in the conference. Wisconsin, I did drop the 15th in the nation. Dropped them four spots there. I do think Wisconsin's still a very good team, but a weird loss there. Didn't see that one coming, but it's college basketball, and they play the road game. Maybe I should expect every home team just to win because it seems like that's what happens. I guess except for Boise State, who had the longest home winning streak in the country, loses a home game to UNLV. Boise State's another weird team to figure out. They've been red hot of recent, lose a home game to UNLV. You're not even on my radar anymore, and that's what I'm talking about because New Mexico... Beats Utah State at home. Snaps a 15-game win streak there, or 14-game win streak there by the by the Aggies. The Lobos, 
15-3 with back-to-back wins against San Diego State and Utah State, two ranked teams. I think the Lobos are legit. But for me, the Mount West is hard to tell. Are these teams really, really good, or are they just all okay and they beat up on each other? Colorado State, Nevada, Utah State, New Mexico, Boise State, and San Diego State. That's six teams that I think can make a tournament in this league. I think it'll end up being five. But how good are they really? They have beat up on each other so much. And I do want to look at these Mountain West standings because they're super interesting to me. One, it, how many te- uh, these teams can make the tournament? Look, so Utah State, San Diego State, Boise State, Nevada, all one loss in the conference. And Nevada, I believe, goes and plays San Diego State today in the conference. Or, and they've all lost their last game. New Mexico's 3-2, and 1-2 two, two in a row. And Colorado State's two and two. They're all sub fifty in the net, except Boise State, who's fifty four. There's four teams in the top twenty of top thirty in the net, and then there's a steep drop off where the last four teams are really bad. UNLV's average. So in this conference, I think they're all good. I do think I think Boise State's the weakest team in there. But look, they're they if they win this game. Boise State's four zero in the conference, and they're being top. Of, of the Mountain West. And I would be like, okay, well, you say it's legit. You lose a home game to UNLV. It's this tough. Uh, I, I, I want to see this Nevada San Diego State game because I'm not sure how Nevada will handle coming off a loss. So is San Diego State. They got pounded against New Mexico. The Mountain West is one of the most interesting conferences this year because at the top, it's super elite, but they beat up on each other so much that I'm not sure how these teams are going to. Be it's hard to rank them because they one will win, beat each other, then lose the next game against another one. Um, but it goes for a lot of great match matchups, and we get another one tonight, which is super fun. Um, and I'll expect the home team to win, which I believe is San Diego State. But let's look at some Wednesday games. Um, before I get out of here, we got we got some good ones. Creighton's at UConn here, a big game in Gamble. Um, I heard it's going to be a packed-out crowd against a good Creighton team. Uh, Creighton, let's get a win here, Creighton. Let's get a nice win. You snuck back into my rankings. Now pull off an upset against number one team in the country. UConn's first time being number one, I think, in a long, long time. I think it's been a while since UConn's been one. Um, That's high expectations. The reigning champs at number one. Big game in Big East play. Six-point favorites. Seems a little low to me. I think UConn wins this game. I know no clinging. I know there's no clinging. So far, it hasn't mattered. Samson Johnson's stepped in amazing. Cam Spencer's a dog. Uh, Carabin's been amazing. Tristan Newton's an amazing point guard. Stefan Castle's got better each and every game. I like this UConn team. Imagine they had clinging. I think UConn's the best team in the country, but they'll probably somehow lose this game. Knowing how much I've been talking about the home team winning, somehow the home teams are all going to lose today. Miami, Florida State. Florida State's 4-1 ACC play. Miami doesn't really – has a fringe tournament resume right now. Let's get some wins, Miami. Let's get some wins. Ole Miss is underdogs against an LSU team on the road. I understand on the road. I understand. But I, Ole Miss is the better team. They've doubted Ole Miss all year because they don't have great computer numbers. But, look, they're 15-1. and one. Chris Beard does an amazing job. I'm sure if Ole Miss wins this game I, – I, they're my first team out. I was but, – but, but, I was debating between Seton Hall and Ole Miss. I went Seton Hall. Ole Miss wins this game. They'll probably sneak their way in. Mississippi State's at Kentucky. I expect Kentucky to get a bounce back win against the um against the Bulldogs here. Mississippi State coming off a very good win. Uh, well, no, sorry, Mississippi State lost against Alabama, but they beat Tennessee last week. Mississippi State's not a good road team. Kentucky needs a bounce back win. I expect them to get it at home. Vatek Virginia rivalry matchup, but Virginia is just not good this year. I could see a potential upset, but Virginia has not lost at home this year. Um, they're really bad on the road, though. They're, they're Virginia's dog show on the road. They they really are. It's bad. It's bad. Uh, let's see. UCF Texas really not not interesting there. Texas though not not great. Uh, yeah. New North Carolina is twenty one points against Louisville. Sounds about right. Maryland at Northwestern's a little interesting. Maryland um, is playing way better in Big Ten play. They're trending in the right direction. Northwestern has some interesting wins, some interesting losses this year. 
I think both these teams will end up being bubble teams that could sneak in. Depends how they finish in the Big Ten, and then maybe whoever wins more games in the Big Ten tournament will make it. Um, Maryland just got off to a really bad start to the year, but been playing better. See if they can get a road win, which is, again, hard to do. Texas Tech is at Houston. This is maybe the this is probably the second best game besides the Louisville game, uh, the Louisville game, the UConn game. Texas Tech fourteen and two, undefeated in Big Twelve play under first year coach Grant McCaslin. They're going on the road at Houston in in state matchup here. Houston back to back losses they've suffered, but they're back at home. Both their losses were on the road. If Texas Tech pulls off this game, I mean. Let's start having some serious conversations about the fraudulent Cougars. I already think they're in the fraudulent category. I get it. They lost two road games. Fair. Come at me. I've been talking about how it's impossible. I don't really drop road losses that harshly, but I've dropped Houston down to, I believe, they're 11 now. Um, I like this Texas Tech team. Again, they're another unexpected team where we weren't sure how well they would do under Grant McCaslin in their first year in a tough Big 12. They've held their own so far. This is a big test, though, for the Red Raiders going in Houston, a team that's hungry for a win after losing two in a row. I expect Houston to win, but 12 and a half seems like too much for me. Give me Texas Tech to cover that one. But the Cougars, I think the Cougars um, aren't as good as the metrics say they they are. The metrics say they're the best team in the country, which they're just not. They're just, Houston's, it's because they blew out teams. <coughs> when they, they've gone to the Big 12, they're 1-2. and two. You cannot tell me they're the best team in the nation. Prove it to me, Houston. Win by 30. Even if they win by 30, they're not the best team in the nation. I'll say it here, folks. But if they win by 30, Texas Tech might be kicked out. I want Texas Tech to keep this close, um, I, and I think they will. The nightcap is Nevada, San Diego, San Diego State. Nevada's 15-2. Um, again, the Mountain West is just such a strange conference. These teams beat up on each other. San Diego State's coming off a beat down against New Mexico, but they're back at home. It's hard to win road games in the Mountain West. Nevada, I'm not sure how Nevada is. They have a good win against TCU this year. They're, I believe, what are they? Two and two in conference play, two and one in conference play. San Diego State, I still think they're the best team in the Mountain West. Talent-wise, experience-wise, this is going to be a tough one. I I expect San Diego State to get it done at home. Why wouldn't I? They're the home team. I think Nomad will keep it close, but I think San Diego State will pull it off. That's a late one, 11 o'clock. That's the nightcap on the CBS Sports Network. That's a very, very good game. And, man, the Mount West every week, every day, I have to be like, okay, who? what Mount West teams are ranked? Right now I have three ranked. Utah State in 21, San Diego State 22, Colorado State 23, and then New Mexico is just out, I believe. Yeah, New Mexico is my my fourth uh, Mount West team with Boise State and Nevada, uh, Nevada, then Boise State behind them. And shout out to Grand Canyon. They've been really good this year. Um, I got my eye on, eye on Grand Canyon. Uh, where, where is the, they got a weird mascot. What is Grand Canyon's mascot? Because I know they have a weird one. I just can't think of the name for Grand Canyon. Now I have to find it out. Because I remember when GCU won. I remember they won a tournament game. Who was that against? Did they win or did they lose it? Abilene Christian won the tournament game. Um, but I'm not sure. What's their mascot? Okay. Antelopes. I knew it. I knew it was something a little different. Uh, the Antelopes there, they've been playing really, really well. Alabama playing well. I will say dropped out, and then the Oregon Ducks. Oh, we gotta look at Thursday. I forgot uh, Thursday because I believe my next episode will be on Friday. I'll try. Um, I don't know when I'm gonna be able to get uh, Fridays out. It might be a Saturday morning, but I'm trying to hopefully get on Friday. It just depends on what I'm doing, uh, but hopefully I can. Uh, Thursday's nothing amazing. Illinois is on the road against Michigan. On the road game, I guess is tough. Yeah, Grand Canyon. Uh, they're they've been playing really good. They play on Thursday, and then yeah, Oregon against Colorado. I I would keep my eye on Oregon undefeated in the Pac-12. Win a road game would be huge. Colorado, they're back to fully healthy, but they've been struggling. A team that was high on this year so far has let me down, especially in Pac-12 play. The Pac-12 is just I don't know. What the, I can't. I don't know what to think about the Pac-12. I think it's a two bid league. I think Oregon's at the second team. Let's see if they can get a road win here. 
that would really put the nation on notice. I think they could be able to get ranked um, or be really close to it uh, next week, and they probably can find a way to get ranked this season. But, yeah, there's, that's besides it, there's nothing crazy on Thursday. And, yeah, we got a lot of good games, though, today. Road winning. Winning on the road is damn near impossible in college basketball. The Penn State shirt for the Penn State win. Another episode of CBB Talk in the books. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.